So we've been talking from the book of First Kings chapter 18. We've been talking about the fire of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I want to talk about that a little bit just to put some context because this week we are spending three days to pray. Um, Wednesday night, 11.15, from Wednesday night to Thursday morning, Thursday and Friday, three nights of prayer, okay? From, you know, 11.59 to 1 a.m. the next day, okay? Mm -hmm. We do that every uh, last three days of the month. So this month of October will be no different. So we're doing it. So I want to give you some context for that event, amen? amen. We've called it three nights of fire. Praise God, three amen. nights of fire. So prepare your heart, come and let's spend some time to pray. Now, the reason why we're really pushing in the place of prayer is because we know that there are certain things that God has ordained to do for us, isn't it? And we need to connect with him to make them come to pass. Okay, let me explain what I mean. God knows what you need before you pray, true or false. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why do you have to pray? It's because there's a process in the realm of the spirit, all right? Where a petition is made on earth, a demand is made on earth, and heaven answers. Are you following me? Now, that process has been set by God, as instituted by God, so that there's government over every realm. Amen? Amen. The realm of heaven, there's government. The realm of earth, there's government. Amen? Amen. So if God wants to do something on earth, he works with, ma um, with man on earth in order to bring that to come to pass. Am I communicating? Mm -hmm. All right. So what does he do? He will stir up the heart of man on earth to pray to God in heaven so that God in heaven will open the gates of heaven and pour out his blessings on earth. It's a system. Hello? Are you with me? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's just the way God has ordained it to be. So I want us to align with that system. Because if God is saying, I'm, behold, I do a new thing, I'm blessing, I'm rewarding, I'm increasing, I'm, whatever God is doing, the system to bring it to come to pass is a system of prayer. Mm. This spring, are you here? Yes, sir. It's a system of what? Prayer. prayer. The more you pray, the more you engage with God, the more you're able to open the floodgates of heaven to begin to walk on your behalf. Luke chapter 18, he taught them, I think chapter 10 actually, he taught them this, they came to him, please teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples, you know that story. Mm -hmm. And then he said unto them, when you pray, say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom, what? Come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So there's a system of the kingdom coming on earth and the will of God done on earth as in heaven. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. It is that system you need to key into. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we are not just coming like people who don't understand. If there's a God in heaven, then there must be a man on earth to pray. Mm. So he will stir up your heart and stir up my heart. How does he do it? He gives you a word. As that word comes into your heart, it stirs you up to pray. And then you connect with heaven in prayer, and then the kingdom come. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Is this making sense to somebody? Yes, sir. Amen. And I want to encourage you, be there when we spend time to pray. Prayer is not something you just do because you want God to give you something. Prayer is a relationship with the Father. It is in that relationship with the Father you experience a divine exchange. And that divine exchange can be physical, it can be spiritual, it can be in different dimensions. The Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you all still here? Yes, sir. All right. So please just let's spend some time to pray and let's see God's face in this season in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 18, please. 1 Kings chapter 18. What do you do when you want the fire of God to come upon your life, to remain upon your life, and to continually bring you into victory and progress? What do you do? How do you engage with the Spirit of God, the hand of God upon you, to ensure that there's continuous victory and advancement and movement in your life? Amen. Amen. How, do you, how do you make sure that you are not that kind of person who encounters God today and then for next two days three days four days there's nothing with god and then you know it comes again on you and then you go you know that's not how you're meant to live are you following me mm -hmm. there's meant to be a consistent fire okay in first kings chapter 18 is where we're going to read to ensure that we uh, push through this this was what we found out on the mount of carmel when god had to show up with fire amen, amen. all right now i'll give you some context do you know why there was this problem of drought? The, the reason why there was a problem of drought in the land was because they were serving another God. They were serving Baal. And it was punishment. Amen? Amen. The prophet came and said, there shall be no rain. Remember we talked about this some Sundays ago. Mm -hmm. the, we found the secret of how he did it. The secret was that he prayed earnestly, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So he said there shall be no rain. Why should there be no rain? Because you guys are not serving the God that you're meant to be serving. All right? So where there's idolatry, there's punishment. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. Some of the reasons why some things do not advance is because there's idolatry. What is idolatry? When you exalt something in your life above God, that thing has become an idol. It's as simple as that. I grew up in a place where idolatry was physical and real. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. If you corner like this, cut corner, you will see. Amen. You see things being served and things being preserved. Amen. Amen. And, and it happened on a daily basis. Are you following me? Mm. Now, some of us think that that is just what idolatry is all about. No. There's much more than that. Even you and I as believers, as Christians, the moment you exalt something in your life above your love for God, you've made that thing an idol. Mm. Do you get me? Yes, sir. You've made that thing an idol. Mm. You can exalt a need or a want above God in your life. Do you know that? Mm. Yes. And that God does not want that to happen in your life. Idolatry is when you exalt anything above God. So the punishment for idolatry was that there shall be no rain. Now, when the time came for rain to come back, we see them coming together upon Mount Carmel for this rain to come back. But there are principles I'd like to share with you very quickly to ensure that the fire in your life comes upon you and continues in your life. Are you with me? All right. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 18 and let's go to verse number 25. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves, dress it first, for ye are many, and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under it. And they took the bullock which was given them, they dressed it, they called on the name of Baal from morning until evening. Say morning till evening. Morning till evening. Saying, Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, amen. <laughs> and they leaped upon the altar which was made. And then they became a bit animated after that. Verse 27. And it came to pass at noon. Elijah mocked them. Amen. Amen. Elijah mocked them. You guys, serious prophet. Amen. He began to laugh at them. He began to tease them. You know, you guys, <laughs> cry loud. You know, what you are calling on to is a God. He may be talking or pursuing. <laughs> he may be on a journey. Or peradventure, he's asleep. <laughs> and you need to wake him up. Do you know that sometimes this is how we treat God? Sometimes when we are praying, we pray as if God is asleep and he does not hear us. Anyways, next verse. The, the people listened to Elijah. And they cried aloud and they caught themselves after their manner with knives and lances till blood gushed out upon them. Next verse, my dear. And it came to pass when midday was passed that they prophesied unto the time of the evening sacrifice. And there was no voice, there was no answer or nothing that they regarded. So if you're looking for a voice, looking for an answer, this is the process I want to get into. Are you all with me? Mm -hmm. All right. And it came to pass. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And the people came near unto him. Number one. And he repaired. Can you go back please? Yes. And he did what? Let's read together. And he repaired, repaired the, the altar, altar of the Lord that was broken down. Number one principle. If you're going to see fire in your life on a consistent basis, you must repair the altar. Amen. Amen. You must do what? Repair the altar. You must do what? Repair. Repair the altar. Now, in this day and time that we're in, in this New Testament generation, the altar is not the front of the church. Amen. Amen. The altar is not a physical place. The altar is your heart. The altars of God are in the hearts of men. So, if your altar is set, is repaired properly, then the fire of God can visit easily. Amen. Amen. Where the altar is prepared, the fire will appear. Mm. Mm. Amen. Amen. And when we talk about the fire of God, we're talking about the intensity, the fervor of God. The, the dimension of God that brings transformation, that purifies, that refines, brings glory upon your life. Amen. Amen. That's fire. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So the first thing he did was to do what? Repair the altar of the Lord that was broken down. How did he do it? Next verse, please. He took how many stones? Wow. How many stones? Wow. Twelve stones. According to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. He took twelve stones. Twelve is a number of government. Twelve is a number of order. Are you with me? Twelve is a number of government. Twelve is a number of order. When you see the number 12, you are looking at the dimension of God that speaks of order, that speaks of government, that speaks of things in place in the right way. 
an ordered place, an ordered heart, an ordered life attracts power on a regular basis. Are you following me? If power comes to a place of disorder, the first thing that power has to do is to bring order to that place. Hello? Before I can do anything else. He wants to do everything, but the first thing he must do is to bring order. In Genesis, when God planted man in the garden, what more was God looking to do in the garden before he planted man? Nothing. Amen. Amen. The garden was already in its ordered place. Water was flowing. There were trees there. Animals were there. Are you following me? Everything was in place. Everything was in order. And in that place of order, God planted the man and began to commune with the man. See, if your heart is not in order, you will not hear what God is saying. You will not receive direction. You will not receive instruction. Amen. Amen. <laughs> if there's confusion in your heart, if there's confusion in your heart, it will be difficult for God to bring advancement to your life. Because the first thing that God wants to do is to create order in your life. Amen. Amen. Peace be still. Let there be calmness in your life. Let there be order in your life. Put your house in order. Put your heart in order. Put your life in order. Amen. Amen. So that there can be continuity of fire and glory in your life. The order place is your heart. Praise God. So what did he do? He built, he took. Amen. I thought I'm here confusing you. Sorry. I don't Which one are we now? <laughs> this is the first one, isn't it? <laughs> the word of the Lord came to them saying, Israel shall be thy name. So it is these people he took. The next verse. You're in the spirit. And with the stones, he built an altar. Where? Name. In the name of the Lord. He built an altar in the name of the Lord. So your heart must be dedicated to God in the name of the Lord. There should be no other name in your heart. Somebody getting this? Mm -hmm. There should be no other name on your heart. It has to be the name of the Lord. If we are praying for revival in Birmingham, in this nation, how many of you know that God brought you here for revival? Amen. 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 <laughs> you know that? Mm -hmm. I know you came to do other things. But well, part of the reason you came is so that there will be fire in you. Mm -hmm. And the fire will change the city. Mm -hmm. Do you know that? Yes, sir. yes. Amen. Amen. That's why all these things shall be added. Amen. Yes, Amen. If you seek ye first there, Kingdom all these things shall be added. It isn't all these things will come first. He said they shall be added. When you seek what first? Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. So seeking first the kingdom of God is putting your heart in order. Mm. Someone say here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So he says built it in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as will contain two measures of seed. Watch this now. Next verse. And he put wood in order. What did he do? The next thing he did was what? He took wood. Amen. The Bible says where the wood is, where you put the wood is, there the fire remains. Amen. Mm. You know, you need to stoke up the fire inside of you. You need to stoke up the fire inside of you. Paul was speaking to Timothy. He said, fan into flame. Fan into flame. Amen. So, so, so there, there's something in you. Are you getting it? But you have to find it into flame. You help me, I help you. Timothy was a bishop. You know that? Mm -hmm. Timothy was a bishop. Bishop of that church says, Timothy, you need to find into flame the gift of God. And the gift he was talking about was not singing. The gift was not praying. The gift was not signs and wonders. The gift was the gift of the Holy Ghost. Are you following me? Mm. If you read it properly, the gift was a gift of the Spirit inside of him. He says, that gift of the Spirit, fan it into flame. Set it on fire. Mm. Amen. Amen. And, and that's what it means when he says he put the wood in order. See the word again, order. You see the word again, order. Mm. He put the word in order. So the next thing you have to do is set the Holy Ghost on fire inside you. Praise God. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Be on fire. For the God, let the Holy Ghost be alive in you. The Bible says in Jude, all of you are doing, all these people are doing what, you know, bad things and all that. He said, but you. Mm. Let's go to the book of Jude. I like this scripture very much. Amen. Amen. Jude, Jude has only one chapter. Mm. It's towards the end of your Bible, okay? Just before Revelation. 
page and now it's joking. So are you, are you in the book of Jude? Yes. yes. Thank you, Jesus. Go to verse 19. Let's start from verse uh, let's start from verse 17. Let's start from verse. Oh, you've opened it, thank you. But verse 17, let's start from verse 17, my dear. He says, But beloved, remember you the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Next verse. How that they told you that there shall there shall be who? Mockers. Mockers. Which kind of people? Mockers. You know, anybody who is not serving God properly is a mocker. Mm. Alright? They shall be what? Mockers. Mockers. In the last time. Who will do what? what? Walk after God. godly lust. When you are pursuing your own agenda, you are a mocker. Amen. Amen. Pursuing your own agenda all the time. It is me, myself, and I. Okay, watch this now. He says, These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. Everything is of the flesh. Everything is of the flesh. Say, that's not the kind of people. He says, verse 20 now. He says, but you. Say, but you. But you. Beloved. Love. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Doing what? Praying the Holy Ghost. Fanning into flame the gift. Are you getting this? Yes, sir. That's how you find into flame. You're praying in the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what he says in the book of Galatians as well. He says, pray with all manner of prayer. Praise God. Hallelujah. And supplication. All manner of prayer. Prayer in the morning, prayer at night. Prayer in the midnight, prayer at 3 a.m. Prayer at 4 a.m. Prayer on the bus. Prayer in the taxi. Prayer before the Uber comes. Amen. Amen. Prayer before the interview. After the interview. During the interview, prayer. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All manner of prayer. Rugged prayer. Early morning prayer. Night prayer. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Breakfast, Lord. Prayer. Fasting. See, I, I, we read it the other day. He did not just say fasting. He said fastings. Fasting. Amen. Amen. <laughs> that an S. <laughs> Daniel fast. Dry fast. Of an, amen. He said, but you, what should you do? Build up yourself. Are you following me? Praying what? In the Holy Ghost. That is the ordered place. That's a place of order. Are you getting this picture? Are you getting this picture? That's the place of order. Where you are learning and you are digging. And you are praying in the Holy Spirit. You are building up yourself on your most holy faith. That's the ordered place. Now let's flip back to First Kings. That is the wood, Okay. That is the wood of your fire. So I don't know, some of us never used firewood before in life. How many of us use firewood? Amen. Ah, many of us here. Praise God. You didn't use firewood. You didn't use firewood. You did. That's nice. We use, I use firewood, I use sawdust. How many of you use sawdust? You use sawdust. I use sawdust as well. Praise God. I use charcoal. Amen. We've come a long So our God is good. Praise God. When I say sodos, so you don't even know what sodos is. They're like, Pastor, what is sodos? Yeah. We'll put it inside and they'll put the sodos around it to put the fire on that. The food will cook in two seconds. Mm -hmm. Then we'll be like, Amen. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That is your fire. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. That's your fire. The Holy Ghost is your fire. Burning inside of you consistently, you are in the other place. Now you can hear, you can hear, you can hear. When God says that one apply, you can hear. That one don't apply, you can hear. Are you getting this? Yeah. When you get there, say you you get there, you say it. Are you? We don't say something you don't say. He says answer like this, you answer that way. Mm -hmm. You are in the other place. He wants to say he cannot get to you because your mind is too occupied. You are worried about him answering your prayer. And he's saying, be in the place of order. An answer will come. It's, are you getting this? Mm -hmm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sometimes your interview is already settled before you start talking to the person. Mm -hmm. It is now when you started talking to them, they now started changing their mind. Yeah. I don't know if you understand me. Because what they saw on paper before them is not who appeared before them. Are you getting this? Yes. And do you know that your CV speaks? Yes. It has a voice. If you commit your CV to God's hand and say, Lord, I'm sending it to so and so place. Let it speak for me. When it gets there, as they are taking the CVs and reviewing them, yours will be telling them favor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a spiritual principle. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. It has a voice. As it tells them favor, they put it aside. Let's call this one for interview. Mm -hmm. Now, you prayed for favor, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now it has been put aside. Now they called you for interview. Hear this. The 
fact that you are called for interviews means you are potter to enter. Yeah. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. Now you need to prove yourself. You came, you did not prepare. Right. You came, you are not listening to the Holy Spirit. You came, you are wondering. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> are you getting this? Mm -hmm. You get there now, and then the Holy Spirit is saying, give them that example. Mm -hmm. You are telling the Holy Spirit, that example was in Nigeria. He says, still give them the example. I'm, I'm talking to somebody now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm not preaching anyhow. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> are you with me? Mm -hmm. Still say it. Still say it. Still say it. You're, you're, you're afraid. Because you're looking down on yourself. But now you listen to him. And you open your mouth and you speak. What happens? That favor that took you there will now help you gain victory mm -hmm. and mastery. In that place, in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, say, I hear. I hear. This thing, are you all with me? Yes, sir. Let be on fire, be on fire, be on fire. There's no law against speaking in tongues on the bus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. There's no law against pacing at the train station and praying in the spirit before the train comes. We used to do it in such a way. That we get there at least 20 to 30 minutes before the train arrives. And we'll pace the platform. Praying in the spirit. Because what we came here to do. You cannot fold hands and get it. Okay. I don't know if you understand me. Yes, sir. Yeah. You cannot sit down, cross your leg and just say, come to me, money come. No. <laughs> it's gone, man. <laughs> We'll be pacing. Nikaso, this land we receive it in Aye. Jesus' name. As the train moves with speed, I move with speed. I'm telling you my testimony. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And then we'll look for map. Oh dear, so what did we not do? Where is the location of this office? <laughs> is it not south, east, or west? We we'll open our window. Did Daniel not open his window? Mm -hmm. It did not first Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Then we to open our window. Amen. Exactly. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Is that the direction? All you building, listen to me. Are you getting this? Mm -hmm. As I walk to you, you will receive me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Pray. That be on fire. That's what I'm saying. Amen. Be on fire. When you're on fire, you will not apply it now. The Lord will say that one, that one, that one, that one. Okay, anyways. And then cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood. So he cut the bullock in pieces. I told you last Sunday. That he took the bread and then he break it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I said the blessing is on the bread, mm -hmm. but you have to break the bread, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The same way the sacrifice is about to happen, but you have to cut it. You must be broken. I must be broken. A broken and a contrite spirit. Mm -hmm. That's who he's looking for. Is that not so? Mm -hmm. He's looking for broken people. If you have made it, thank God for you. Some of us we are making it. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are making it. And everywhere he brings us to, we say, thank God that we made it here. Yeah. Lord, take us to the next. Yeah. Is that not so? Yes. Sir. Yes. yes. That single people, before you get married, you have all this time to pray. Are you following? Mm -hmm. I don't know why this came up. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. You have all the time to pray. When you get married, you will not have as much time to pray. You know that? Mm -hmm. Then when the children come, I used to think about it, you know, of our Lord Jesus Christ. My father came, my parents were around recently. At my age, they were still asking me. They were still asking at my age. So I looked at I said, I asked, I said, Do you have another child? I said, At your own age, you're laughing. Praise God. Amen. They said, Never say never. I said, We have already said never. We've shared the grace. We've, you know, there's this song we used to sing in church. Jesus, I love this family. Amen. Amen. They have locked church. <laughs> Everybody has gone home. <laughs> Nothing is happening. <laughs> now the children we have are spiritual. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There was a time when we want to travel. Oh, we just this babes. Let's just go to Paris. Eh, let's go. Eh, let's go. We just get up. Yes, we dress up. Mm -hmm. We pack our bags. We just go. Wow. Amen. Amen. Now. Hmm. Let's go to the shop. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not talking uh, the shop. <laughs> Who will stay with the children? Yes. Can they stay alone? If we leave them alone, what will they do? Do they have food? Do they have this? Food rural infrastructure. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. This is a time to pray. Are you feeling holy? Mm -hmm. mm, okay. 
I just gave you the hour free of charge. Amen. Now, God can take you through the ridiculous mm. to show you the miraculous. Mm. You hear me? Yes, sir. God can take you through the ridiculous show you to the show you the miraculous. Watch this. Fill four barrels with water and do what? Pour it on the burnt wood, the burnt sacrifice, and on the wood. How do you want fire to come? And you are putting on the sacrifice what will stop the fire from coming. Are you following this? Mm -hmm. That's the same thing that happens to us. Father, I don't have this. So I cannot pray. Are you getting me? Mm. And God is saying, you don't need that to pray. You need to pray so that that will appear. Are you getting this? Mm -hmm. I'm so disappointed I'm not praying. God says, no, no. <laughs> Are you following me? Your disappointment should bring you to a place of prayer. Amen. Amen. Because what is against you is a setup for a lift up. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 You getting this? Mm -hmm. Four barrels of water, pour it on the wood. Next verse, my dear. And he said to them, Do it again the second time. Uh -uh. Okay. And they did it the second time. And he said to them, Do it again what? The third time. And they did it again what? The yeah. third time. So four barrels of water, pour three times, four times three, yeah. twelve. Again, an ordered place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you getting this? Yeah. Sometimes perfect trouble is what brings perfect miracle. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. You have gotten to the place where you cannot do anything by yourself. Then God says, I will show up right there. Because if you can submit to me in that place, then I can do great and amazing things. Amen. 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 Some of us are used to us doing it and then giving glory to God. It's okay for God to use you. But sometimes God will say, I want to put you aside so that this one you will know that it's not by power, mm. not by might, it's by my spirit. You did not know anybody. You knew God. And they did it the third time, isn't it? Next verse, my dear. And the water ran about the altar. Look at Jacob. Now, I've talked to you about a few things. I've talked to you about the fire. I've talked to you about the ordered place. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. Now I'm talking to you about the covenant. Mm. Amen? Mm. The Lord God of who? Abraham, Abraham Isaac, Isaac, and of Israel. 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 Notice he did not say Jacob. Mm. What did he say? Israel. Because Israel was the name that God gave him after he wrestled with God. Yes, sir. Are you getting this? Mm -hmm. hey, that's another topic entirely. Wrestled with God. Came out of that wrestling with God. He was limping. Mm. God showing him that you have to lean on me for the rest of your life. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So, so covenant is guaranteed. You operate a covenant. Say covenant. covenant. Say covenant. covenant. You operate a covenant with God. Amen. An agreement with God. That's what we operate. Amen. Amen. So, let it be known. So, he was calling on the covenant keeping God. Amen. God, you said I should go. I have gone. Are you getting me? I've done my of the covenant now it's you for time for you to do your own bit are you getting it that's exactly what's going on here let it be known this day <laughs> let it be known in my life hallelujah Amen. that you are what the god in israel i am your servant and i have done all these things at thy word so when he told them pour water he did it by instruction he did not just get and say i will pour water no God told him to do it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want fire to fall, there's a process to continue in. And I'm trusting that God will give you wisdom and give you grace in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Can I hear a louder amen? Amen. amen. A louder amen. amen. Next verse. Next verse. Let's round this up. Hear me, O Lord, hear me. That these people will know that thou art Lord and thou hast turned their heart back again. And what happened? Verse 38. Then the fire of the Lord fell. Amen. Amen. Are you waiting for fire in this season? This is how you get it. This is how you get it. The ordered place. The place of the spirit. The place of the word. The place of the covenant. Amen. Amen. The place of prayer. This is how it works in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. And I'm trusting that God will perfect everything that concerns you 
In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Say it loud, amen. Amen.